Who is your daddy? I am your father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? Well, let's get into it. We are here with episode 115 of Fathers of the Grind, which, hey, looking back on it now, if we wanted people who are searching for the topic of our show to find us, we should have called ourselves like the Gaming Dads or Dads Who Game or... I would have honestly preferred Gaming Dads with a Y. Yeah. Um, I think immediately we would have been shipped to san francisco uh-huh. yep. and broadcasted all over ign GameSpot, all that without a doubt we'd be called brave a lot of these guys are brave yeah. it's so yeah. brave we so could be brave we could have been so brave yeah. um but we chose not to be brave obviously we chose to be rebellious and you know deny our gayness we could we should have called ourselves straight dad gamers with a y in gamers Straight up dad gamers. I think it should be like straight white male gamers. Dad with a y. gamers. Still with the Y in the word gamer, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta have to ha- you gotta put white in there because yeah. our opinions matter these days. Well I really hope John Martin listens to our show so he can get well, like angry inside. Oh white how- victim. Derek's a little white victim. <laughs> Well, if we put Relax. that in our title, then at least people would understand why we talk with so much privilege. So, yeah, identity yeah. politics is stupid. So if you listen to that show, our show, and that offends you, bye. Don't care. All right, uh, so yeah, let's let's kick off the show. This is I'm gonna take over. I don't want Tim to do his job anymore. He's do terrible it. at it. Go. This is episode 115. Uh, we're gonna talk about games and stuff. Um, I don't even game anymore. I hate games now. I'm actually anti-gaming, so I don't even know why I'm on this show anymore. Tim, take over. Well, good intro. Thanks for the inspirational <laughs> kickoff. Uh, those 2.5 listeners that we've maintained over the last couple of years. Completely offended gone. and gone now. Yeah, now they're gone. <laughs> one of them left when we started talking about white privilege and making fun of it as a concept, and the other one left when you said you don't like gaming anymore. So Exactly. Now it's just me talking to nobody. That's the sad part. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. That's a show that I would listen to. Uh, what's funny is I actually have still been gaming, but I haven't been playing much new stuff. So I don't have a ton to talk about. I still really like Owlboy. It's a very fun game. Mm-hmm. Not super challenging, but very very cool little side-scrolling game. Uh, I haven't gotten much farther in Bayonetta. I'm I'm in Chapter 7, so I haven't played that a ton. But still, a, again, very slick game that I, I plan on finishing that and Bayonetta 2. And when I when I do game, I've been doing uh, a lot of Rocket League with my kids and been playing Monster Hunter World. So cool. when I, I just haven't had a ton of time. This, the last couple of weeks, really the last month, has just been really nuts. You know, things changing at work and just, just really busy. And that's... I'm not saying you guys listening or you, Derek, aren't busy, but I've just hit one of those waves of lots of stuff going on. And next thing I know, it's like the end of the day. And I'm like, wow, I don't think I talked to anybody in the Facebook group. I don't think I even thought about, you know, what our next topic for next week's going to be. So, but, uh, but it's just been one of those weeks. So this, this is probably one of those shows where both of us just kind of run out of things to say uh, at some point. So this is going to be a relief to some of you who, I don't know why, I think you're masochists. You like to... The sadomasochist, right? Would you, would you like to punish yourself so you just keep listening to our show over and over again? Um, sure, our show is pure quality. As long as I'm on it, it'll be quality. If I quit, you're yeah, screwed. Yeah, then I am in big trouble. That's right. You You'll can replace big... me with Sasan. I mean, I think we have very similar personalities and humor. Yeah. I just think he's just a trash version of me, a Middle Eastern yeah. trash version. So you're yeah. still taking a step down, but it won't be too bad. He doesn't speak with the same arrogant white privilege that you do, but otherwise, sure. yeah. Sure. Well, I, I am Alpha AF, Alpha AF. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been playing what? Since I know you're, you, you have not been in a gaming mood. We texted about this the other day, yeah. and I think that in and of itself could be an interesting podcast topic for at some point in the future to talk about what that's like and, and when it's time to set the controller down and do other things, and I think there's a really good time to do that. Um, but you said you maybe have been playing a little bit. Have you been playing anything the last week that is worth talking about? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll bring up one game. I mean, I do want to say, because um, <clears throat> I don't, uh, I don't know. When I was younger, I always shared everything. And yes, I know people would be like, well, you post a lot in the group. Yeah, I do share like gaming stuff, stuff that doesn't, in, to be honest, matter. But like important stuff, I usually don't share it anymore because I've kind of learned as I've gotten older, if you just keep quiet and don't try to get people to praise you and stuff like that or, uh, you know, tap you on the back, say good job and search for compliments, you usually get more things done. At least that's what I found for me. You know, mm. shut up and just do it. Yeah. So I haven't talked about it. but hey, you, like, you, might, you might even say shut up and dribble, right? <laughs> Offended. John Martin's now really mad. <laughs> he can't even handle this podcast. Anyway. If, for those who don't know, because we do get listeners in our inner group, John Martin is our only black listener. He's not even really black. He's and fake he, And black. he doesn't he's even fake listen. News. So he's neither he doesn't even listen, so I can insult him. Um, so, but he so gets triggered by he's our a white whiteness. white non-listener is what you're saying. <laughs> 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 yeah. So uh, anyway, so um, I started January 1st. I actually, uh, in December, there is a guy... Uh, I follow on on um, Facebook. I, I don't know him personally, um, but he's a, a religious guy, and he basically said he was forming a small group, like a real small group, and only wanted people that were committed to um, sticking to the plan. And you have to follow his rules. And this was starting January first, and the plan was, you know, with your eating, your exercise, and all that stuff. So I think that's kind of why I haven't been gaming as much. I know I was gaming earlier in the year, and you go, well, why is it impacting you now? I actually, I did his three-week program. It worked kind of, but I didn't, I wasn't fully committed. Um, I probably only worked out half the time um, when I was supposed to do it every day. Now I've increased, and I'm working out a lot, and I'm very tired. And so usually what I do, and you can ask my kids, I mean, I don't know if they're out here. The boys are here somewhere. But I literally will come home exhausted and I'll just turn on YouTube and I put on like depressing music and I just listen to depressing music until I fall asleep. So that is my life the last couple weeks. Uh, I'm not doing anything. I'll play Rocket League because, and we talked about this last week, there's no thinking. It's competitive, which I'm a competitive person, so I enjoy the, the competition but it to me it's gaming but it's not really gaming anymore it's just something i do instead of watching tv um the only thing i will talk about is oh by the way in the 2 months that i've been working on stuff i lost 12 pounds i just found out nice. tonight cuz nice i don't work. weigh myself either cuz i was worried that if i didn't get results i wanted i'd quit um but, so i didn't want to make it about weight loss i wanted to make it about making me better so tonight was the first time i weighed myself and probably four weeks nice. um the only thing i would share gaming wise because i haven't really played anything new is uh another thing i did that i never do and i know i've said this on the podcast i actually hung out with friends for the first time in probably four years i hung out with my two buddies um david and nate i've known them for like 30 years uh we met at church when i was like eight or nine years old um, and we've been friends since, and so we finally got together, ate some dinner, and then we went back to David's place, and we booted up an Xbox 360, grabbed three controllers, and we played Death Row for about four and a half hours straight. That's awesome. And nice. you know what? I gotta say, I've I've always praised this game, and I do love it. It's a great game. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a little archaic. The controls can be a little because uh, when I first started playing it, because I hadn't played it in a little while. I kept using the right stick to try to move the camera, and David and I are like, what the heck's going on? And we're like, oh, that's right, you can't. So the right stick, we're so used to controlling yep. cameras in all games, this game does not have that. You have to manually turn your character around with the left Ugh. stick. So that's kind of like a pain, but yeah. I cannot tell you how much fun I have with this game. And part of it that that makes it so great the the gameplay is fun the gameplay is like playing like a rocket league type game you just shut off and you just play it's all about competition it's a sports game in case people don't know um but the the f funnest part about the game is the three of us cracking up at what the characters say during the game like you play different teams and they're all like these like you'll play like uh convicts or 
off uh, like you'll play police officers and so you'll get all these like groups that you play in this competition and all they do is yell and cuss at you the entire time and it's terrible well, it is, voice it is acting called death row so yeah Makes it's sense. hilarious like i was dying well and it over helps when you're stuff. with friends who are all getting that same yeah vibe of how silly it they is. they were cracking up i was cracking up we just kept repeating the lines the entire time it was it was a, a fantastic night it was definitely something i needed which is weird because uh my personality is uh, heavily introvert and i'm a loner so i enjoy being by myself i enjoy playing video games i don't like going out but i think i'm hitting a stage in my life where i'm like Okay, maybe video games aren't doing it for me anymore. I'm not saying I'm going to quit, but for right now, they're not doing it for me. Maybe I need to go out. Maybe I need yeah. to talk to people and have fun and, and do something different. But that's, yeah, that's pretty much all I played. Death Row for four hours and then that's, Rocket League. That's still probably more than some of our listeners got to play, you know, when you yeah. get to play a four-hour uh, round of game. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Pull out the Megan old game. didn't is... even fight me on it. Like, I was like, hey, I'm going to hang out with David and Nate. And she's like, have fun. And that's not normally what my wife would do. The reason why is because she knows he never goes out, and I hate the fact that he's antisocial, so he can go. That's why. <laughs> She's like, he cares. <laughs> he wants to talk to people. <laughs> it's funny when you go back and play an old game where you've got a very specific set of memories attached to it, mm -hmm. and then you go back and actually play it. That Actually, there's another topic we could talk about. Games that you've revisited that now are just way different than what you remember. And and I think sometimes it was it's a mistake to go back and play those games. Yeah. Um, now sometimes. it sounds like with you guys you had a good time and who cares. But Yeah, we're other... already planning on getting together again and doing yeah. it again. Yeah, why not? But there are other times like I remember when I went back and played Goldeneye uh after having played a ton of first person shooters on this old N64 system and I fired it yeah. up and I and I was like this is I can't play this. This is bad. Now, back then, it was awesome, but now it's kind of ruined my memory of how awesome that game was. Um, yeah. So that, that can happen, too, depending on, depending on the game. But, uh, but yeah, I also have been playing some more Monster Hunter World from time to time. Uh, I'm at the point now where I'm hunting down these, these Elder Dragons, uh, and you're finding these, uh, I think they're called tempered versions of monsters, which are, so when you get past a certain point in the game, all the monsters go to what's called like a high, high rank level so they're all tougher and then there's tempered versions and you can there's it's very rare but you can find their tracks out in the world that are purple in color the the uh, scout flies turn purple and so then you get you get investigations to go hunt those guys down they're way harder and then of course there's elder dragons and i believe one even after i hunt the elder dragons down in the end game i'm pretty sure there's even harder versions of the elder dragons so it's uh there's a there's a ton of yeah i'm done with game, game. <laughs> there's a ton there's a ton of game here. Uh, I think I'm just short of 60 hours in, and I'm ready to I'm ready to see the credits. I, I feel like I've played it long enough. I want to earn my way to the to the final credits here, but it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. I did not expect to get lost into a really deep, big, you know, action RPG like this this early in the year. I really didn't. Um, but it's funny that uh, I'm having this much fun with this game. I like this game a lot. I really liked both indie. In two indie games, Celeste and Owlboy. I think they were decent. I've liked uh, the collection that was released of the Bayonetta, the Bayonetta games. But overall, when you look at last year's January, February compared to this year's, I did a poll for this in our group uh, a few days ago. It's just not even close. I mean, last Ooh. year we had some amazing games. And, of course, March last year was insane. And uh, and it just looks like this year it, it's, it's tough to follow a year like 2017. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's, t it's a tough year to follow. So... I don't think yeah. that's, I'm not saying that plays into you saying, you know, gaming just doesn't have that major pull for me right now, because I know you've got backlog games you could go play, but it, it is so far lacking that majorly hyped game for you. Like you didn't have Resident Evil 7 and Neo yeah. and Horizon and Zelda. That's kind of what I'm waiting on. That's going to be the test is when, because I'm not even excited for Sea of Thieves. Every time I boot that up, like for the beta and stuff, I'm like, mm, sorry. Is it um, uh, Far Cry 5? Is that one? Yeah, Far Cry 5 will be a test. If I I already bought the game on PC. I was planning on getting on the Xbox to play with Nate Bacon, but I haven't really talked to Nate much, and I don't know if I want to buy, buy two copies of the game day one since I can't take my PC version back. But if I boot that game up and I play it for like an hour or two and I'm like, I just don't care, then I might be in danger. And your show <laughs> might be in danger. And... In danger. 
and my wife will be like this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've been praying to Jesus for years that he would stop. So we'll just see. Just tell her that at that point we would just ha- keep the podcast going just about something else. We'll figure it out. We'll talk about we can... uh, this cult that you joined, apparently. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about sure. that. We can do that. Because you did describe a cult. You know, you said there's this one guy who wants a very small group to be very dedicated, and they got to yeah. change their diet, and they need to get into a certain shape, yep. and they they have to be committed. He did ask us to cut ourselves every day. That was right. part of the, the plan. Naturally. And to worship Satan. Yeah. Right. That's all part right. of it. So. <laughs> In Jesus' name. So, so, uh, so maybe that's what we'll have our, our podcast. Fathers of the Grind will turn into a... Um, fathers of the cult kind of a situation be good. well i did quit the group like i just did the three weeks i reported in that i i think in the first three weeks i had lost five pounds and i wasn't even sure i lost five pounds because i didn't weigh myself when i started so i just guessed and so i was not happy because i felt like i followed it real well and then after searching my heart a little bit and pitching a fit for probably a week or two and not eating is healthy and not really exercising a lot, I was like, you know what? You didn't give it your all. You've mm-hmm. done better in the past. Because for those who don't know, I don't want to be a narcissist or anything, but I lost 100 pounds on my own like 12 years ago. So I know how to do it. it it's, that, it's, that's not my issue. My issue is discipline and consistency now. Like I don't have the discipline and consistency I had back in the day. And so that's why this challenge was important to me is I wanted yeah. to – Prove to myself that I could go back to the way it was. And I feel like now I've hit that where I'm like, I'm in a pattern in my life where I'm like, if I don't work out, I, I something's not right. Whereas two months ago, it was normal not to work out. I was just like, I don't care. Yeah. Just yeah. try to eat healthier. That was like my philosophy. Just try to eat healthier. Now I'm trying to do everything. There you go. Yep. So nice. And you're also uh, you're pushing forty. So yeah. Getting. I mean, I'm life. already ridiculously good looking. Could you imagine how how much better I'm gonna look when I'm a little bit, you know, fitter? You I know literally can't imagine. I mean, it's let's just say it's impossible. If to I was any gay, no I don't know. Improvement. I don't know if you would have a shot at at me. <laughs> I don't really. I really don't. I mean, I like I the personality right. and everything. Yeah. But if you want to talk. You know, yeah. about dating. I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna be know. tough. A lot of competition out there for for gamers like you. <laughs> gamers, gamers like you. Well, I posted the uh, the question earlier today in our group and on Twitter, and I got some responses. So I want to share some of the responses here, and then we are gonna share our thoughts on the top five worst games that we've completed. And so the reason I'm asking this is because in this day and age, for the most part, when I start a game that I don't like, mm-hmm. I don't finish it. I'm done with it. Yeah. But especially back in the day, when you get a game, that's probably your only game for the year, or maybe you'll have one other game that year. And that's just the way it was. Of course, you're a kid, you got to save up money, or you have to wait for a birthday or Christmas. <laughs> that's just the way it is. So, yep. um, of course, as an adult, for most of us, that's changed a little bit. But some people, for some reason... They've got this OCD mentality of I've got to finish this game. And I think you and I have that every once in a while, but we're not that bad. We usually we'll just stop if it's not doing it for us. So so I asked this question in the group. So I'm going to share some of their answers, and then we're going to share our top five <clears throat> worst games that we've ever completed. Just um, so, so you know, I wrote five games, but I, I didn't really put them in an order. I know I put one, two, three, which, by the way, that was redundant. I just realized you had one, two, three. But anyways, um, I really didn't put it in That's order. Fine. I just I just was typing out five. Yeah, we won't set this in stone. So if someone asks you this question with a gun to your head, you can let them know, that wasn't ordered. So don't worry about it. That's true. That 1.2 listeners that we have now. Oh, yeah, because we lost the one with all of our yeah. offensive talk. Yeah. Um, our buddy Dan Phillips, who has been a guest on the show, he says Hellblade. That's one of his... One I agree, his, uh, the top Mr. Five. Dan Phillips. It's one of trash. his top worst games he's ever completed. Um, and, of course, he got some angry responses to that. Or at least, you know, the actual angry emoji response. Dragon Age uh, I gave him a love. You did give him a love. I emoji. Know. I know. Yeah. Uh, I see Dragon Age Inquisition here from Jose Jimenez. All right, well, he's a piece of crap. <laughs> 
Uh, Jason Marshall, who, by the way, go check out Nerds Gone Platinum, their podcast. I was on there with Jason Marshall and uh, Moose Cluel. Um, who else was on there? Jeff was on there. And I think in the past, they, I mean, they also team up with the guys over at um, at NGR Radio, you know, Corey and, and Matt Keel and those guys. So all that to say, go check out Nerds Gone Platinum. I was on there last week and we talked about indie games. And it was really funny because I... I texted or messaged Derek and I said, hey, I'm going to be on uh, Jason and Moose's show. Do you want to come on there with me? And I said, we're going to be talking about indies. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure your only response was trash ass. I was <laughs> like, yeah. All right. Hell no. I hate that shit. Yeah. That's Edit that, Tim. I'm, I'm probably not going to do that this time. I'm just going to let that one fly. It was just one shit. Well, now there's two. Don't do this to me. I don't want to have to edit a lot tomorrow, okay? Don't do this to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jason Marshall says Mass Effect Andromeda, and I Gosh, disagree. I, with I my can't buddy stand these people. One. This is terrible. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Freitas, who at one point tried to say that listening to Derek is kind of like a horrible game, but he keeps listening. Yeah, that's um, true. He's our he's, one listener. He says either Gone Home or Firewatch. Okay. And I, I can so he totally doesn't like I... walking similar, similar. Yeah, yeah, like stop playing those then, Daniel. Stop. <laughs> uh, Damien Miller says Army of Two. Matt Keel says Orc Slayer. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Gaston Senya says Gone Home. And he has some additional words about Gone Home. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a fan. Alan Heinen says My Name is Mayo. Remember when that one came out and it was like an easy platinum? It was like an instant platinum for like 10 minutes of playing some garbage game. It was one of those yep. Platinum Hunters dreams, basically. And Homefront was mentioned as well. I've, I've, I know people didn't love Homefront, but it wasn't bad enough to quit outright, but it also wasn't great. So anyway, Homefront. Yeah, I didn't hate it. I didn't think it was high quality, but I enjoyed my playthrough and finished the game. One of my favorites is from Manuel. He says, uh, Barbie's Hide and Seek or Barbie's Fashion Game, both in the Genesis. He so, really played those. I 100% believe that he played those games. Like, at first, I was like, yeah, this is probably an stab at a joke. Nope. I believe that he played those. And and it's a tie. He hated both of them, but he loved <laughs> Barbie so much, he had to see it through to the end. <laughs> That's what I think happened. The um, sequel. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's get to our lists here. So, here's the rules. Yeah. Of course, you have to complete an entire run-through of the game, of the main game, at least. And you must dislike it can't just be and there's a few that i put on there i actually had listed a couple that i put more in the disappointed category when it was all said mm -hmm. and done but that's not really it the idea here is i really think these are some of the worst games and i played it all the way through to the end so that's what this top five is like you said yours is in, in order that's totally fine if if you do happen to have one or two that you know would be like the top of the list just save those for the end otherwise it's yeah fine. oh well i've got a few that just missed the cut as i was making my list uh earlier this week um games like donkey kong 64 as the more I thought about it, that one fell more in the disappointed category. Um, same thing with Manhunt on the PS2. We've talked about this game before. It's not the worst game. It's just looking back on it, it's a pretty horrible experience. It's a pretty awful, pretty yeah. awful game. And when it was over, I did feel really gross. Like, this is a bad experience. Um, Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, I think, is actually by far the worst Mario game, or at least the Mario mainline games. It's a weird game. It's, it doesn't really belong in the Mario series. It's very strange. And, uh, but I, that one didn't make my list. Aru's Awakening, a game that I actually reviewed uh, a couple years ago. It was on PS Plus, and it has a charming and cool look to it, but the gameplay is quickly exhausting and way too difficult. I mean, not even like fun, difficult, boy, that felt good to overcome that bad guy. No, just yeah. way too difficult. And the last one I'll put is Speedy Gonzalez. I wonder what happened to that guy. I wonder if the, uh, if the community just decided this is too stereotypical, we need to get rid of this character. But it's, it's funny if that's the case because, and I think it is. I think they're like, this This feeds into too many uh, Latino stereotypes. But the reality is Speedy Gonzalez was by far the most popular Looney Tunes character in Latin America. They loved him. They loved Speedy well, Gonzalez. Trump built a wall and he's gone. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He didn't have his papers. Get but him out of here. My story about Speedy Gonzalez, even though it was a very mediocre to bad platforming game, uh, he controlled really weirdly, like he was on ice all the time. Um, but the it was like a really bad Sonic clone. But what's funny about that is that was when I had, I owned zero consoles. My um, 
my older brother had a Game Boy, and sometimes we got to use my dad's computer. That was it. And I remember one Christmas opening a box, and it was the Speedy Gonzalez game for the Game Boy. And I was like, oh, great. I have a game that now I have to ask my brother permission to go play. This is going to be fun. And then, of course, the next thing I opened was my own Game Boy with a pack of, like, 12 pack of batteries or whatever. So I got to... So I, I have good memories of that game because it was my first time owning my own console that was totally mine. It just wasn't a great game. But here we go. Let's get to our actual lists here. Top five worst games we've completed. I'll kick it off with Star Wars Shadows of the Empire on the Nintendo 64. This is one of those games that I got for Christmas, and it's pretty much all my brother and I had to play that you know wasn't old that year, and so we played it for at least a couple months. We both played that game all the way through to the end. Uh, it's just not a good game. It's a third-person kind of action shooter game. There's really no cover mechanic to speak of. I don't know if they even had cover mechanics in games back then, really, so I can't blame them for that. Um, but it was ugly, number one. There were already PS1 games that looked better than this. Uh, there were plenty of N64 games that looked better than this. It was very ugly and muddy. All the textures were very, very muddy. Um, and then it had these very strange difficulty spikes. I remember there being moments where in order to progress in the game, you'd have to make a jump that is nearly impossible. And if you miss the jump, you die and have to go way back in the level. So just poor level design, mm -hmm. um, a dumb story. And as we know, Disney took over and all this side story stuff is no longer canon. So it's useless anymore anyway. But that was a game that I completed because I kind of had to. And looking back on it, and I did, I did retry it uh, a couple years ago, probably about five or six years ago. Um, and it is not good. Not a good game. So that's my number five. What would you, uh, what would you say is one of the worst games you've ever completed? Um, let's go with Beyond Two Souls. Now, let me start off by saying you made the rules that you had to complete it and you must dislike it a lot. I don't finish a lot of games I dislike. I think this is a little bit easier for you because you finished more games when we were younger. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like I played games for a long time. I've shared the stories about all the times that I played Zelda and all that stuff, but Best I didn't finish those in the games. business. Yeah. So and, and the games I did finish, like the Resident Evil games and all that stuff, I liked them. So my games are going to be more recent. And so I dislike Beyond Two Souls. I don't hate it. So I can't say a lot, but I would put it at the five slot. Um, I was definitely disappointed by it because I really liked Heavy Rain, um, but I just thought it was a stupid game. Like it had a dumb story, it was kind of all over the place. It was just so, like by the time I got to the end of it, which I was hoping for soon, um, and the payoff was there, I was like, "This is this is r ridiculous. This is probably the dumbest game I've played." I've heard that in the re-release or in the remaster, whatever it is, I've heard that there's a way to play it through in order where it's more enjoyable. I don't know if you've tried that or heard about that. No, I bought it because of Heavy Rain, and I didn't play either one of them. I just left it on my PS4. I guess I wasn't in the mood to replay those games. Well, hey, since you're feeling depressed and listening to sad songs on YouTube while you lose weight, you might as well go back and play those two games. <laughs> like, who loses weight and then is like goes through like sorrow? <laughs> you do. This guy. Yeah. It's because you can't have your midnight Oreos like you want to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. All right, so for me, my number four worst game that I've completed is the Die Hard Trilogy for the PlayStation 1. This was a swing and a miss at an arcade-style shooter on the PlayStation 1. It just did not carry over. I believe it was an arcade game, like an actual arcade cabinet game. And it was... Kind of interesting in the arcades. On the PS1, carried over horribly. It performed horribly. Uh, I did not think it was fun at all. Now, it's very possible that there was some sort of um, like light, light gun addition I could have used with this, where it would actually read where you're shooting on screen, and it could have been actually arcadey and fun. But because I just used a standard controller, I found it to be super annoying, very slow. Um, but I did finish that game. Um, I, if I remember correctly, it had co-op. I think either that or I took turns with my buddy. I can't. I can't remember, but I do know when it was over. We were like, "Wow, that was really bad." So, Die Hard trilogy, really bad version of like think of Area Fifty One or Time Crisis or some of these old arcade shooters, uh, where you're on rails and you kind of you know finish kill all the enemies in an area or House of the Dead and you move to another area. It was like that, but really, really bad. So, Die Hard trilogy on the PS One, not a good game. 
but I beat it. So there you go. All right, give us. A, I don't know us, why. Give us another. I don't know why one. you play these bad games. I, I don't know. Uh, your list is way worse than mine. Uh, number four. I'm gonna go with. Geez, this is tough. I'll. Uh, Which one do you hate? I'll the go least? with. <laughs> I'll go with. Uh, Killzone Shadowfall. Okay. Um. I bought that at launch. I was actually uh, of the PS4. I was actually really, really excited for this game. Um, it's, it's not terrible as far as gameplay. I can't. Again, you're playing like older games. Like a lot of the, your games on your list are older, and they play terrible. Um, this one doesn't play terrible. I just thought it was uh, trash. Like I didn't like. It was another one of those first-person shooters where you had like 20 guys shooting at you from all angles. And you can't really take cover real good, whereas uh, Killzone 2't and three had a like a good cover system. Um, it just or, wasn't or at least they gave fun. you places where you could take cover. I don't know if they actually yeah. snapped cover. I think they had a cover system. Did they? But I haven't played them in a while. Okay. Um, and maybe even Shadowfall did, but I just remember getting frustrated and I played it was it last year or the year before I played beat it for four in Feb. I think it was last year. Yeah. I thought it was last year. Because you were pretty close um, to the end of it, right? Yeah. It was another one of those where it's like, well, I might as well just finish it. But I played it a lot at launch and I didn't like it, so it was the first kill zone game that I quit. And then I came back last year to finish it in four in Feb. And I just remember I even remember the post that I made cursing the game, telling everybody how trash it is and dan phillips was like well why are you playing it and dan and i fought over that and i was like because i want to finish it you know so and i do get like that, that uh, was Derek 1.0 game. now we've got Derek 2.0 who's health conscious and he's above Racist. gaming he's too grown up for gaming now and he's I would moving never on. play something that i do not like um so yeah this game not terrible but i don't like it it's it's not a good kill zone game hey that's what our show's going to be from now on. So uh, as soon as you decide, hey, I'm done talking about video games, that's all right. We'll just move into a uh, snobby Derek show. That's true. Where I basically get on and ask you about all the things that you hate and things that you scoff at. That's what it'll be. It'll be totally great. do that. Yeah. Can I talk about people? Because I hate yeah. people. A you lot can do that. Of them. So uh, my part of the show will be talking about games I'm playing, and then you'll interrupt with your snobby take on pop culture and current events. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. All right, number three for me is another N64 game. Uh, there was a certain point in the N64's life cycle that we were just hungry for games. So the N64 was getting trounced in sales by the PS1. Developers were flocking to the PlayStation 1, Sony's new system, their first system, and it was killing it. And N64, although it had some cool first-party stuff, was struggling for solid third-party games. And when they announced that this new RPG exclusive to the 64 was coming out called Quest 64... I was very excited. It looked cool. It had a cool uh, kind of Dragon Quest uh, style anime look to it, and it looked fun. And it was going to have this kind of action RPG battle system. This game was awful, and it was super short. Um, a few of the battles I remember being fun, but it was very short. I mean, this game was probably six <coughs> to eight hours long, and for an RPG, that's hilariously bad. Full price, yeah. ga- full price game. This wasn't some. This was before the days of. $10 indie downloads. If that had been the case, I would have given it a pass and said whatever. It just wasn't good. Yeah, this was probably 70 bucks, right? This was like a $70 reading Nintendo Power, counting down the days till it comes out, going to the store to get it, playing it through in essentially one and a half days and going, are you kidding me? Uh, no replay value of any kind. You could just start a new save. It was awful. So Quest 64 was the third worst game Believe me, there's even worse ones coming. Uh, the third worst game that mm-hmm. I've completed, and it was a bad one. I just want I want to say, like, you really do play a lot of trash. Like, you even do it current day. It's like your taste hasn't changed at all. You're like, hey, I'm so used to playing bad games. Let me keep playing well, them. Well, just listen. Um, next time you join a cult that can teach me how to live life better, let me know. <laughs> and I'll jump in there with you. I will definitely help you lose weight and be depressed. I cannot your, wait. Your wife will love it. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> so upset, honey. <laughs> oh my gosh, stop He's being a little... He's always so sad and thin. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's used to my emo-ness. Uh, you are super three. emo now. This is hilarious. You need yeah. to grow your hair out a little bit. Get the bangs so you can like do the Tobey Maguire from Spider-Man 3. Yeah. 
Yeah. Please. I even did a, a personality test yesterday to see what was wrong with me. I'm like, well, I have to have a terrible personality. So I got to figure out what it is. Yeah. And you know what it came out as? I'm a rare personality. Like, literally only 5% of the people in the world have my personality. And what is it? What's your personality? I don't know. I erased it. I read the whole thing. Oh, what was it? Yeah, I, I know people on the show are like, seriously, Derek, nobody gives a shit. No, people want to hear what shits. your personality is. That's three shits. That's four. I just did four. Um, let me see if I can find it. All right. Well, well let me give that. let me give my game, and then while yeah. you talk about your number two, I will. Let's hear your I will number pull three. It up. Number three. Works. Uh, let's see, I did Beyond Two Souls, Kill Zone. Let's go Hellblade. Yeah, let's go Hellblade. Uh, sure, it could be under the category of disappointment, but I actually really hate that game. You actively um, disliked it. Yeah, objectively, yeah. I still think it's a quality game. I'm not mad people like it. Um, I just think, for me personally, it's a bland game as far as when it comes to how fun it is. Again, I get it wasn't designed to be fun, Jesse White. But the, but you the wanted story... It to be fun. Yeah. Well, I wanted to enjoy the gameplay yeah. and let it be challenging while experiencing an awesome story. And the story was even one that I was like, this is stupid. Like, the payoff didn't pay off for me. For other people, it did. For me, it, it didn't. So, yeah, I, I actively hate it. I will say this. Again, the hatred is more stemmed from disappointment and the fact that it's so popular. Again, if nobody played Hellblade, I'm the only person that plays Hellblade, I probably say, well, I probably don't talk about it. I, I don't admit I played it. But because it's so popular, it's easier to hate on it. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah, you like to go against the grain, you know? You're above you're above these other peasants. Well, you. it's that five percent personality. I'm totally whatever it is. <laughs> oh, I found it. I'm a yeah. virtuoso. What? I'm a virtuoso, which apparently that's Harrison Ford's personality. Which that's not that shocking. Harrison Ford kind of comes across as a uh introvert douchebag and i'm definitely that um it's also some of the main qualities is i am not empathetic which i was actually told by a good friend of mine at work a girl i talk to a lot she gives me low scores on my empathetic scale like she constantly tells me you're terrible at being empathetic and i'm like because you're overly emotional and stupid. But So anyways, my She's like, "But my entire family died." You're like, "Chill out." That's a terrible story, and I don't know if I should say this on the show. I'm going to do it, but please don't judge me. This is just who I am. So this same girl, her and I are talking, and I'm like, "Oh, so you know, trying to find out stuff about her." And she tells me about her dad, and so I assume, since she has a stepmom, that they're divorced. So I'm like, oh, so, you know, what about your mom? And she's like, well, she died. So she tells me that she died in 9-11. I was like, oh, wow, you're the first person I've met that's lost somebody from 9-11. The very next day, the very next day, I'm talking to, to her, and I snap at her, and I say, F you and F your mom. <gasps> And then I Holy like. Holy crap! And I paused. Not by the way, so people know, I wasn't saying "f you" and "f your mom" in like a mean way. I did it in my joking way. But I said it, and then I paused, and I went, "Her mom's dead." Like in my head, I'm like, "Her mom's dead." Yeah, you, can't. you were doing it as a standard, like your mom joke. Yes, I always do it your mom happened. jokes, and I was like, "F yes. you" and "f your mom," and I was like, <gasps> it, "I did that internally. I didn't show it to her," and she. I know she caught it, but she played along. Like, she moved on. She didn't get, like, overly emotional. So Ooh, good for her. Yeah. I guess she Sounds a... like she's the real virtuoso. Because it feels like... Virtuoso sounds like a compliment. You know, it sounds like you're, you're amazing at stuff. That's what it sounds like. I am. I mean, they said I have a rare personality. Now, I should go that's check not... all the other personalities. They might that's say... It's not necessarily it's... a good thing, you know? Yeah. Like, I think... Like, I think Ted Bundy also had a rare personality. Actually, you know? it goes into great detail. It's not just, like, well, here's your personality, and it gives you, like, five words. 
it has like page upon page on like how you are is in it, relationships. Was it accurate? It's probably ninety percent accurate. There was a few things Ooh. where I was like, no, that's not me. But pretty much everything else, I was like, yeah, that's me. That wasn't me twenty years ago. That's me now. So my personality has definitely changed. Um, but they said that my personality is five percent of the population. But it's really small for women, so only mainly only men have this personality. Only mm-hmm. a very, very few women actually have this personality. And if you read it, it is a very manly personality. It's not emotional. It's, it's very even keel. Down to earth. Sure thing, gamer. Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My... My uh, my number two worst game that I've ever completed was a Super Nintendo game that I got for Christmas. Okay, so my parents went through a phase where they knew we loved games. They knew we had a Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. But they also knew that based on, who knows, some article they read in some Baptist magazine, I don't know, told them that video games could melt your kids' brains and turn them into killers or whatever. So they were... they ended up only getting us games for a little while that had very cartoony looking characters and graphics and all that kind of stuff. So we would always get things like the Aladdin game or the the newest Looney Tunes. You know, the Looney Tunes used, used to put out a whole bunch of video games. Like there was a bunch of Bugs Bunny games and Daffy Duck games. All of these are or like we even got this seven up spot adventure game. I don't know if you knew this, but there was a spot cool spots adventure or whatever it was called. These are the kind of games that we got. All of them were mediocre platform games. Um, they all could have been on this list, but none of them were bad enough compared to this one to stand out. And this one was Bubsy, one of the worst platforming <laughs> games ever made. And it's funny because the first one is actually kind of passable as an old school platformer, but it's still really bad. This is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But from what I've read and heard from others, I've never played the follow-ups, but all the sequels that came out, things like Bubsy 2 and Bubsy 3D, and they just put out a Bubsy game last year that was apparently laughably bad. It's just a horrible, horrible series. It's a horrible franchise. I don't know why it still exists. Pretty sure it was made by Acclaim back in the day. Kind of like the uh, the go-to B, B team for development. Um, but Bubsy was a very poor, poorly controlling platform game. It kind of wanted to be Sonic, but he wasn't fast. And it kind of wanted to be Mario, but... It didn't. The jumping and and ju- and jumping on top of enemies did not feel quite right. They didn't have it. It's almost like this game was a prototype made by some students. It was just really bad. The only good thing this game had going for it was there was probably like twenty different ways, twenty different animations for him to die that were sometimes clever, sometimes funny. It's like when you would run out of when you get hit too many times. The way he would die is you know he would like turn and wave a flag as he like sunk into the ground or whatever, like little little yeah. silly cartoony things. Other than that, really bad game. But again, this is another classic moment where this is – it was like this and Final Fight and Mario World is what my brother owned. And so hmm. my brother and I owned. So that's what we played. We played Bubsy. And uh, we were also like – we were pretty good at making our parents feel great about the awful gifts they gave us too. So so we played it a lot. Like, no, we love it, guys. It's great. Yeah, I remember that. Like my parents went on vacation one time and they got me – I was a big uh, card collector – and they got me like these baseball cards, and I remember like looking at them and being like, "This is all trash! Like all ter- like why did you buy these? They were all bad." And I remember like I started crying because because I felt bad that I was upset that they bought this trash, and so I ended classic up classic keeping... virtuoso move, right? Yeah, there. classic, classic. I was definitely a virtuoso back then. Uh, so I decided to actually keep them all, and I put them all in protective cases, and I was like, they're special because they gave them to me out of their oh. kindness of their heart. That is See? so not who I am today, and I... I say, you, you had a little shred of humanity back then. I so. hate it. That's terrible. I, I had regret a that. You a little shred of humanity. In fact, you know <laughs> what? I'm going to tell my parents next time I see them, they bought me trash cars, and they're garbage for it. Um, <laughs> what am I on now? Two? Yeah. So you got two left. All right, so you and I debated about this one. It's near, and you say you didn't finish near, and yes, I did. No, I didn't play the three playthroughs, but I finished my playthrough, and that playthrough was trash, overrated, garbage, trash. It's boring. The combat's stupid. The story is dumb. The only thing good about that game is the chick is hot, and she's a freaking robot. 
So that's not even that hot. Unless you're into that stuff, but I'm not. I prefer real women that don't talk. So I actually that's gonna be the probably would like for a this robot. Episode. That's the subtitle <laughs> for this episode. Is I prefer real women who don't talk. So maybe I do want a robot because you can just turn the switch off. You can program her to not. Talk. By the way, I saw a story, and I'm I apologize to all the listeners if you're this far into this this uh, podcast. Next week, I promise I'll play games just so I have something to talk about besides these stupid stories I keep telling you. This is actually uh, probably one of our more entertaining episodes we've had in a while, so keep it going. Well, that's because I think you unfortunately like my personality. Um, but <laughs> there was like some article I saw, I think it was on like Yahoo or something, where a guy is going to try to have babies with his sex bot. So he has one of those sex dolls, not bot, I guess, one of those dolls, and I guess he's planning to have babies with it. Like, that's his goal. Just oh, wanna... so this isn't like some weird uh, artificial intelligence technology. This is actually I think it's just doll. the doll that lays there. Well, and that's dumb. I thought this was going to be like a real-life Ex Machina situation. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Ex yeah. I thought it was going to be something like that. Like, no. hey, this is kind of no, I think this is. Of that. No, uh, I think this is another uh, boy man. More boy than man, seeking attention. This is the world we live in. Uh, there's a lot of girl women that need attention too, and they do all these things. So this is the world we live in now with the internet. They try to find new ways to get Yahoo or somebody to write an article about it so they can get 15 minutes of fame and be called an idiot over and over. But yeah, so near, I guess. I don't know how I got onto that. Am I on near still? Near was trash. Well, we, we got talking about relationships with robots that you may or may not be interested in, and we just went off the rails. Yeah. By the way, when people do like what I'm doing, where they're going, off, they're clearly depressed. Uh, I have no joy <laughs> in my life. I'm going crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, tell you what, and I'm okay with this. If you want to take a few weeks off, if you could just hand the mic over to Eli, and he and I will chat. Eli gets uh, about, shy, though. I mean, clearly he's really shy about nudity, mm -hmm. but he gets really shy about talking. So, what about what about Ian? He plays some FIFA, right? We could just do the no. FIFA update Ian, every week. Ian is not a gamer. Uh, Emily retired after Mario Odyssey. She put a ton of time in that, and then I haven't seen her game since. And Eli is the only one every day. FIFA, 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 FIFA. All right, sounds like it's just down to me and Megan sitting here chatting video games then. Oh, so yeah. Tell her to get on here. And... She's got some, like, iOS game that I see getting my card getting charged a lot, and it's like a home designer game. That should be a great conversation. Yeah, let's talk about that. I'm on a new couch today, Timmy. <laughs> That's kind of stupid. I get it's mad at her. Yeah, I've, I've seen that game. It's called the We're Now in Debt Home Designer Game. <laughs> it's so it's really fun. stupid. And she <laughs> pays like a dollar to five dollars. I get a charge every week. I'm like, really, Megan? Really? This is this. You you condemn me for all my games. And this is what you do. You pay money to design. And I have Sims 4 on my PC. Come play yeah. Sims 4. Stop yeah. charging they've, me. Dude, they've added so much stuff to that game. There's pretty much nothing you can't do in Sims 4 if you're into that kind of into that kind of god style game uh i just want to respond real quick to your pick of near i know you don't like this game that's yeah, totally fair just same way you feel about hellblade where it's kind of like i don't care what other people think about it I i'm with you on near if people don't like it i will say this and the reason i put you didn't finish near was part partly to troll you but also i know the credits roll after you finish that first run through the story i know the second chapter is basically re-experiencing the first story from a different perspective mm -hmm. and i think that was actually poor game design they should have made that second chapter much more unique but it's just way too similar and that's a problem i actually did i know you're getting to a point but i just want to clarify i did start the second playthrough Got really it's far too into much it. Much of the same. Not real far into it, as far as I wasn't yeah. about ready to beat it, but real far into the intro of it, or whatever it's called, prologue, died, and it started me all the way in the beginning. I said, "F that! I'm not doing that crap. This is. I already hate this game. I'm not going through another 20 minutes of what is it called? What are those type of games where you're like in a little spaceship and you just shoot like Galaga type games? That's what the uh, whole intro yeah. was. I was like, I hate those games. Yeah, it's when you it's when you hop into your like mech and you're yeah, flying around. Stupid. I actually, I actually like those kind of games, but it's not necessarily delivered the best in in near. Stupid. Um, it's very arcade style, right? And um, I hate that. You know that. Like that's a lot of what indie games are, and I hate 
that right. trash. Yeah. It doesn't help that that second chapter is basically replaying chapter one from a different point of view. Mm-hmm. They do show you a few different story elements that you didn't see otherwise, but honestly, all, everything from the beginning all the way to the final boss fight is what you already did. So that was annoying to me, and I remember thinking, this is kind of a poorly designed, quote-unquote, chapter two. And for some reason, the same Tim from the 90s who's playing all these garbage games yeah. all the way to the end, I, I thought, I'm going to try chapter three because at some point online I read chapter three is where they, it takes a turn. And I can confirm, chapter three, the story kind of just goes crazy, and in my opinion, it gets really interesting in a kind of a sci-fi anime way. Um it's a, it's a dark story. It's a very dystopian type of story, but it's very interesting. The game gets much more challenging, though, so it's not for everybody. It does. I think it gets really tough, mm-hmm. but they change a whole bunch of stuff, and it's pretty sad but pretty interesting. To me, that's what made the game good was that third chapter. Chapter one what I thought was great. Chapter two I thought was repetitive, and I was ready to say never mind. But chapter three, in my mind, redeemed it. That's why I like to troll you about not finishing it. But to your credit, the credits rolled, right? So that yeah. is a... Technically, that's a, a run through the main game. It's their own fault for designing it that way. So there you go. Or we could just say Derek doesn't like the first playthrough of Nier. I Not may fair. like the second or third, but I hate the first playthrough. Yeah. And you might not. You might get to that and say, really, that's what everyone's talking about? I, d- I, I doubt I'll like understand. it. I doubt I'll like it. You might, you might not like it, but at least you might say, okay, I see why some people like the way the story went. Because yeah. it does... It does I'm wondering if I should just YouTube it because I, I don't feel like I need to justify myself in playing it. Um, yeah. And I've said this in the past, you know, I don't play free games. Like when PlayStation and Xbox gives us games, I'll download them or whatever. I don't play them. I, I invest my time in what I invest in. So usually when I pay for a game, I feel like I have to play it to a, at least to a certain extent, whether it's beat it or... Or just play it a lot and go, oh, okay, well, I had a good time. Um, So even bad games sometimes, which, again, I don't have a lot of games that I hate, I'll play them just because I'm like, I paid money for you. Near, I feel like I played what I paid for. I don't feel like I won in in that instance. But I don't feel like, oh, I need to beat it to justify what I, I, I feel like I did what I could. I gave well, it a fair shot. Definitely don't play it now if you're already battling against the feeling of I don't think I want a game right now. Definitely don't play it now. Yeah. If you if you if you try it again, wait until you're really pumped about video gaming. Yeah, which will probably be when like twenty thousand games come out. So I don't think near is something I'll ever go back to. That's why I was thinking maybe I should just YouTube it, see where the story plot goes from from there but i wasn't really intrigued by the first playthrough nope fair enough fair enough all right here we go with our final picks and then we're going to wrap this thing up so Derek can go back to listening to stained or whatever he's doing over there um (laughs) i think it's called holding absence if if you care they haven't actually released an album but they are they're pretty cool stained is that who no it's (coughs) Holding Absence. Well, I'm going to listen to Under Oath's new song, um, but Holding Absence is actually inspired by Under Oath, which is pretty cool. I didn't know Under Oath had come back. And uh, they're not as heavy, but they've got a really cool vocalist. But they're they're definitely emo. You are, you are super emo. Oh, yeah. he's definitely emo. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you're very emo. Okay. Uh, my number one pick is a game that most people probably never heard of, but it's one that so we, we were, uh, my, my folks were missionaries over in Budapest, Hungary for several years when I was in elementary school. And I remember this was like 89 to 93, like that time frame. And I remember my dad, he had to for his, to communicate back to the States with the agency as well as to communicate there in, in Hungary. He had to have a computer with, with email and mm-hmm. got all that stuff set up. And so we had a uh, there was a friend of his who built computers, mm. which to us sounded like wizardry, right? Because yeah, computers yeah. were still kind of kind of rare back. Home then. computers were fairly fairly new. Anyway, he builds us this computer, and he kind of gives a wink and a nudge to us, and says, "Also, it'll play some fun games if you guys have any games," because he made it fairly powerful. So we ended up asking my dad for games. He didn't want to get any games, especially none of the violet ones that were out. You know, big stuff like Wolfenstein. He thought was going to rot our brains. But he was always okay with these little, like, cheesy games. So we were allowed to do um, King's Quest. Pretty much anything from Sierra or LucasArts was okay. So Space Quest, King's Quest. 
one of those types of games, and so what we used to get was friends from the States would send us these care packages, and I had a buddy who would send us video games, and they would send them to us on floppy disks, and he would, he would write out with pen the name of the games that were on these floppy disks, Commander Keen and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, we got Hugo's House of Horrors, <laughs> which was a combination of a Sierra adventure game like Space Quest. Okay. You use the arrow the arrow keys to walk around. You click around the environment to find a rope, and then you got to use the rope to tie it to this thing, and then you can finally climb to the next area. Very simplistic puzzles. The idea being you're this guy named Hugo, and you your girlfriend gets – I forget all the story. Who cares? She's somehow in this mansion, and you – go to this mansion and it's, it's trying to be scary, but it's also trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. So I think they were trying to rip off maniac mansion. They were trying to rip off some space quest and they just failed on most fronts, but we beat this game so many times. Cause again, one of the very few games we had, it was almost like playing solitaire. It's just what you did. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a run through of Hugo. And at the very end, this Dracula guy quizzes you on a bunch of stuff before he'll give you your girl back. And there's, they're actually, you have to like type in the answers. So it felt kind of cool to actually type in your answer and of course the game was programmed to accept a couple different variations of the answer so Hmm. anyway all that to say it was a game that i completed so many times before we finally got game boys and super nintendos and all that that i have no idea why i wasted time doing i really wish now i would have built up some sort of life skill right if i would have learned how to program a computer or if i would have learned how to do some kind of design work or something that would have helped me later in life, that would have been great. If I would have just gone outside and run a little more, I could have been more athletic. Mm. But no, I played Hugo's House of Horrors probably a couple dozen times uh, when I was a kid. Do you and want it a... to come to the Switch, though? I would lo- <laughs> I would love for it to come to the Switch. It was awful. No, no one should play this game. It's bad. I, all I remember from this game is everything was very purple and black. So it's a very dark-looking game. They try to make it scary slash funny, a little Adams Family asking it just real bad. That's my number one, and it's just burned into my memories as a young kid. Uh, yeah, so I just looked at some times. pictures of it. It looks legit. Looks good. <laughs> yeah, it's yep. real fancy. That trend of great taste that you guys have. Um, all right, so my last one is another uh, game that's loved way too much, and that's Journey. Terrible game. Hyped up. Uh, people can say, well, you don't like indies, that's why. But I gave it a fair shot. I bought it on the PS3, and I played through the entire thing, and at the end I was like, this is stupid. What a dumb freaking game. And I watched GameSpot's video where they praised the multiplayer and how you didn't know you were really playing with somebody and how emotional and so stupid. Such a dumb game. Does the game even have a story? Did I just miss the entire point of the game? It's dumb. It's a dumb. You're asking game. the wrong person. And for anyone listening who loves Journey and who's like, all right, it's time for Tim to come in here and set Derek straight. No. I'm not going to do it because I didn't even finish Journey. What Cowboy you know? wants to get to a mountain. Is that the story? I mean, I don't is understand. It, is it like two hours long, right? It it's a very so short game. Stupid. I never finished it. I literally played it for like 20 minutes and I was like, do I want to do this? No, no do it's this. dumb. So, hey, it's you and so I actually dumb. agree on a. Yeah, but overrated it's, game. Well, you didn't you put it in your top five. You put in trash. But that's because I didn't, I never finished it. Oh yeah, you did just say that. I forgot. Yeah, I would have had yeah, probably more been. interesting games because again, I finished all these, so I hate them. But I don't have a deep hate for all of them. Like Hellblade, I don't have a deep hate for Beyond Two Souls, Killzone, stuff like that. But Journey, I legit hate. I I would it say out of the five, that's the, the only games one. games that you hate the most, right? Because that my list would look different if it was just straight up. I hate these. No, well, I tie hate and uh, dislike together. That that's that's how I use. Right, wait, no, but these are these are games that we actually completed. Yeah, most yeah. games that I legitimately hated, I never finished because I really hated them. Yeah. So that'd be a, a different list, I think. Yeah, um, that's what made this hard because our... I'm like, oh, well, I feel like I kind of like some of these games, but yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. There's our top five worst games that we've ever completed. Top five worst and games per- and Derek's personality traits. And Derek's personality traits. That's right. That's Hashtag our show. virtuoso. Such a terrible <laughs> name, virtuoso. by the way. Hashtag cult. Yeah, yeah. The- Hashtag cult. Everybody should go get their vir- uh, virtue. Should go get their uh, personality checked. And if you are overly emotional, you need to change yourself. 
guess that's what's, what's the wrong name of with this, this personality world. test. Do we want to plug it or leave it alone? Uh, sixteen personalities dot com. Go there. That sounds as as Derek might say. That sounds super legit. Sixteen, and I got a rare one. Congratulations. I'm right. rare, people. That does it for us this week. Next week, we might talk about some video games. I don't know. We might not. We might that's, talk about Death Row success. again. And we people, might. go play Death Row. The game's freaking amazing. At least I found one person in the group that knew what the heck the game was and played it, and that's JP. So I'll give JP a shout-out. JP and I fight a lot, but we at least are adult enough to go, you know what? We don't hate each other. Let's just move on. So... JP and I ended up talking last night a little bit about Death Row, and he 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 loves that game too. So at least watch videos so you can just hear <laughs> all the lines that they say. It's all random. It's it's amazing. I'm gonna watch some Death Row on YouTube, and you go watch the ending of Near. Yeah. And let me know if there's any uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If there's any value. That you can understand why, okay, I see why people like this. I, I'm curious to hear well, I mean, legitimately if you would say, okay, I see why people like it. Get, or if you would say, no, you guys are truly idiots. This is the worst thing. Let me just say this. This is not a spoiler just because I don't know the ending. But I predict that every character that's the main character in that game sacrifices and dies. So that's probably why people liked it. It had sacrifice in it. Maybe. Maybe. Tim won't confirm but i'm sure if i go and check the videos that's what it will i will be. neither confirm nor deny <laughs> all right let's close this stupid showdown uh guys we don't even know if episode 116 is gonna happen i'm i'm emo right now so we may just quit the show <laughs> it's very true i'm yeah, emo while i'm true. smiling yeah and i know a lot of people don't have they don't watch our youtube yeah, nobody yeah, watches our youtube Two why do we even re run. Yeah, why do we even record our faces? Nobody watches YouTube. It's a waste of time. Uh, I think it's because we like to see the sarcasm in each other's eyes as we true. disrespect each other's opinions. Yeah. Or something. I was very no. disrespectful tonight. I apologize. No, this was a fun episode. And if it's the last one, it's a good one to go out on. So there you go. It's not the last one. I'll get out of my stupid rut. Uh, I'll get out of it. All right, guys. We'll see you next time, or we won't. See ya. Dramatic. <laughs> oh, whoa. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? And stop.